What were some of the major projects you worked on that you can talk about? Um, to, to be honest, I mean, I consider my career to be aggressively average. Um, the only thing I probably ever was involved with, and I was a super small cog in a very big wheel, was uh, the Jessica Lynch rescue. I mean, other than that, there's, I left the command in 2006, so a lot of the things that, that whether it's the Captain Phillips or uh, the rescue of the aid worker in Africa or the Bin Laden raid, all of that happened well after my time. So I think people in that era, even though they would be unlikely to uh, want to raise their hand and directly attach themselves to that, a lot of that stuff happened post my time. Crazy question for you. So announcement comes out, hey, we've killed Bin Laden. Mm. Okay. And okay, sounds good. And he's dead. And you know, the, the speech that uh, Obama gives, which I think his speech was like nine minutes and the famous <laughs> Trump speech is 48 minutes. Abu Bakr <laughs> Baghdadi <laughs> is dead. <laughs> He Shane died Gillis like a crushes dog. that. Oh, oh my God. He heals it. <laughs> it's, it's, I know, by the way, it's one of those things that my kids watch it on repeat over. I mean, you know, most of the time people, you knock on the door before you go. No, we didn't even knock. We just came through. I mean, the way he oh, told the story. So but anyways, funny. so Ben Laden. Okay. We found him. He's dead. We dump him in the middle of the ocean. Mm. You expect me to believe that? And, and so, so then the question for you, like a guy who's on the inside, I don't know, man. If you caught somebody, can can we see a face? Can we see a body? Can we see? Why are you so quick to drop the guy into the ocean? So, is I mean, listen, this is just us speaking. It's just yeah. the four nobody's, of us in this room. Uh, it's not I like I promise you, not a, I'm I'm not so, a voucher. And nobody's so, watching. So, yeah. like, what, do you, are you certain that Osama bin Laden is actually dead? Yes, because I am friends with people who were there that night, okay. and I've had conversations with them independently. The decision to dispose of the body in the way that they did, I've heard it phrased in a couple of different ways, but one of the main ones was that they didn't want to create a place where followers would come and use it as like a place of worship or connecting in there and then connecting and doing something else with those ideas. Um, I've heard it say that they were trying to at least in some way, shape or form respect the religious beliefs of that individual. And there's a third possibility that maybe you guys have or have not considered Maybe there wasn't much of a face left to take a picture of. Got it. Okay. And I get that. And c c could we add a fourth possibility? Oh, we can go. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> I mean, he might be on a space shuttle right now. What? I don't know. Like, how deep do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually the, the, the truth is the aliens came. They took them. They went to a different planet. And they're just, you know, they're hanging out over there playing backgammon. No, but the fourth option would be, could it be possibility that you announce you dropped them? in the middle of the ocean, but you have the body and it's buried someone else, somewhere else that nobody else would, the, would the, is the military and our intelligence capable of lying to the people of what they did with the body? Uh, I would say possible, but not probable because there'd be too many moving pieces. It's the same reason where, when I hear people talking about 9-11 uh, being an inside job, I've worked with some of the people at the absolute highest levels of the intelligence organization mm -hmm. and apparatus and the military. And I'm sorry to break people's hearts. It's not a bunch of Jason Bournes running around. Um, if you pull back the curtain at the agency, and I don't mean this from like a case officer level or um, the individuals working there. If you're looking for Jason Bourne, you're going to find a donkey with a fly buzzing around <laughs> its head. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, it's a huge bureaucratic organization. They do many, many, many things. But, it, you know, what's, what's the saying? A secret is something that only two people know. As soon as you start adding layers to that. You know, because there's the helicopter crew you know, everybody who was on target, right, who supposedly let's assume that the body, they have a mannequin in the body bag. If they even put them into a body bag, I'm not sure. So everybody on target would have to be a winning participant in that. And then how they get to target helicopters. Right. So, OK, the helicopter crew is now exposed to this as well to include the support personnel that's gassing up the helicopter, all the things that make those things fly. Then you go back to a forward operating base. All right. So. How many people at that base are now going to be included in this particular narrative? And then it makes its way out to a, a United States naval vessel. And you know what I mean? It just it, – to me, again, not impossible, but it becomes much more improbable as you start adding those extreme layers of exposure and individual. That's where I'm at with you on 9-11 because for me with 9-11 – by the way, we had – is it Richard Gage? Am I saying the last name correct? Yes, name Richard correct? Gage. We had him on here. How long did his episode last on YouTube before oh, they took uh, it down? Like that day? Maybe yeah, the next I was day? Like 20 minutes. I mean, what did he say? Yeah. Of, they took it down like within a, uh, it, it may have been a day or two before they took it down. And his entire story and the premise is the fact that, you know, 
it was an inside job. Lex Wexner was involved and, you know, how the other building buildings seven. come down, building seven and all these things. So, but for me, I asked him, I said, how many people does it take to do something like that? You mean to tell me you can keep 50 people quiet? Well, how could you keep them quiet? Everybody has their individual thing. People want to brag about their legacy. You mean to tell me like, you know, guy's not going to sit there and say, well, let me tell you what I did. It's kind of like when you, you know, a, a guy... Uh, uh, Gianni Russo is like, well, let me tell you, I hooked up with Marilyn Monroe. People want to brag about, you know, what they've done. It's like later on, I was actually part of it and you're at a bar drinking. So those 50 people who were involved would need to remain non-alcoholic for the rest of their lives, never get drunk, never do drugs. And either you kill all 50 of them, which 50 of their family members would come out and say, why did all these 50 people who were working on the building get killed? There is, that's the challenge that I go to, right? So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.